So welcome to the Helix webinar series. Today's session is on BMC uh, new portfolio, which is our solution net trio. Um, today, we're going to introduce our new presenters. But before we get started, I just want to make a couple of reminders. For those that haven't used Zoom before, we have the Q&A section of Zoom at the bottom. Um, if you have any questions during this presentation and also the demo, please put them in there. We're going to be spending roughly 45 minutes or so going through content and also the demo. And then at the end, we will have around 15 minutes for the live Q&A. So with that, I'm now going to hand over to our first presenter, Richard, who will introduce the team. Over to you, Richard. Thank you so much, Samantha. Hi, everyone. My name is Richard Drulo, and I am BMC's Worldwide D Director of Sales for the Netrio Solutions, which is, includes both our network performance monitoring capabilities as well as application performance monitoring for developers. I am here with the two of the top solutions engineers that have worked with me for over a half a decade here at Nitrio, Ronnie Cardona and Furquan Kaja. They've worked with me in some of the largest US federal agencies, largest banking institutions and healthcare providers around the world. So I'm very proud to be with them and meeting with you today. So let's get started. Let's look at the agenda. We're really gonna spend more time because we have a technical audience today and the live demo environment, it's really important to get there quickly in the Q&A section at the end. So I encourage everyone on the bridge to really interact with us, ask the questions that come up in, in your mind as we go, but we'll have plenty of time for the Q&A at the end. Um, I'll give a brief overview. Furquan's gonna take over and go through a couple of really incredible use cases for our solutions, some real customer stories, and off to Ronnie before we on the live demo environment uh, as we go. So let's talk about the acquisition of Netrio by BMC and what we feel for the Helix story overall for our worldwide customers today at BMC. We're adding the agentless, fully agentless upstream network monitoring capabilities that BMC needed to fulfill its total AI story in the Helix environments. And we're also providing the application monitoring for developers. So we have the visibility now and observability from the inside the application out and from the outside the application in. But for today's discussion, we're really gonna focus on the network performance monitoring for this, for this audience. And we may have future webinars talking about APM as well. So here it shows you the, the full platform in one view. Um, who are the consumers of this platform? Who have we served for the last 24 years as a company with our hundreds and hundreds of customers uh, you know, serving over half a billion devices and are monitoring today on a worldwide basis? It really is the network operators trying to make the life of the network administrator easier and the reduced administrative burden and reduce the alert noise for them in their day-to-day -day life. You know, our two co-founders, James Mancini and Andrew Anderson, who will be with us at, at, um, at BMC Connect just next week. We hope you join us. Um, both were some of the top Cisco network operators and really started from the ground up with this common code base, really focused on making the daily life of the network operator an enjoyable and great experience. So that's number one. Two is the NOC. The, the NOC is a, a wonderful place that we sit in, in large US federal agencies and a lot of areas like big healthcare providers and financial institutions that want a global observability view as well. And of course, IT leadership doesn't want to have a bunch of tools and finger pointing in their operation. Uh, and that's exactly what we provide with a full comprehensive network monitoring uh, solution. So three of the top things that we try to solve for is one, reduce the administrative burden. So you're, you're going to hear from Ronnie in the live demo soon, talking about the idea of auto, you know, auto discovery in various different types of means, and then pulling those devices with what we call our cascading templates in an organized way so that you can use, you know, use better role-based dashboarding as well within the platform. But the idea of cascading templates and organizing as an administrator at scale is very, very core to our platform. A very simple drag and drop dashboard generator. Wow, it sounds like a simple idea, but for us, we can generate thousands of custom dashboards for every role-based user across large federal agencies in minutes. Uh, it's simple, easy to use and drag and drop versus some of our competitors make it very difficult with coding and other means to do so. Um, we, we focus very heavy on event correlation, congregating alarms, suppressing devices that are not the core issue and getting MTTR quickly. So the idea of the of managing an incident in an intelligent way, uh, doing things like automated layer two, layer three topology mapping uh, is very vital to the platform as well. So four of the key uh, points and differentiators for us, and I'll turn it over to Furquan to get into the customer stories quickly, is one is the idea of zero touch onboarding. I think about one of the largest European transportation companies uh, in Europe, a big rail system that Furquan and I work on quite readily. They had a requirement from government in Europe to actually have zero, on, zero touch onboarding of devices. 
And what does that mean? We're fully agentless network monitoring. And when any device gets plugged into that environment for that, that vital rail system, we're going to automatically discover it. We're going to interrogate that device in a very intelligent way with our templates and place it under monitoring in the right way with the right dashboards and reporting for users to consume that, uh, you know, the knowledge around that device. So really the idea of zero, on zero you know, touch onboarding is super critical for us. Um, but definitely the auto configuration rules that we use to intelligently manage devices over time and what we call the total life cycle of a device is very much built into the actual platform. Huge reductions in administrative overhead, massive reductions in onboarding uh, devices as well. So really important to look at when you get into the demo with Ronnie coming up. Another idea is absolutely this comprehensive observability, right? Whether it's a router, a switch, a gateway, you know, uh, you know, even a, 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 a Linux box or a Windows server, right? And even to storage and cloud services, we're fully agentless across full of stack observability. Uh, we like to say it's network monitoring, but for BMC, this is the area that we've got an agentless approach to full stack observability that extends even into server and infrastructure. So we know that we've got agent-based monitoring today with Helix. Now BMC has this agentless way to actually provide additional observability in other areas of customer environments. We're really working hard at event correlation, right? And, and really working hard at congregating those alarms and removing actually noise in the environment before we even go into Helix and other ITSM systems. So really important to note is that the real focus in the demo is on this idea of intelligent alert management, congregating those alarms, using the topology mapping and other means, parent-child relationships automatically discovered within the platform in an agentless way. Really important to note in the demo today. Um, of course, we fully integrated to the ITSM systems around the world uh, because we know we have to like remove that MTTR, but trying to send better, more intelligent data into the, uh, you know, into the ticketing systems. Another key area for us is the idea of you can custom, you know, custom build a report from any view screen in the dashboard. A lot of our other competitor solutions out in the market, and I've competed with a lot of them over the last half a decade, you know, they make it challenging to do instant reporting from any view screen, scheduling that out and getting it to different users and leadership. So we've made it very intuitive and simple to use, and you'll see that in the demo from Ronnie, but the idea of instant report generation from any particular, you know, action that's going on in, in your network, you can instantly report, schedule that and, and get it out to the right people to, to triage and look at. We're trying to get people's eyes off screens as much as possible and actually getting more predictive in their environments. And the idea to have agile, quick reporting capabilities is vital to that so you could start sharing knowledge in a more intelligent way. Options are important. It's, you know, your cloud, my cloud, or on-prem, we like to say. So absolutely, we have a full native cloud option uh, out there in the market today that's very mature in the market. We have an incredibly powerful on-prem solution as well. Um, as more of an appliance-based approach, we're really taking on BMC's simplicity idea around uh, the fact that we're a fully self-enclosed appliance with you know, a built-in database and not requiring a separate Windows operating system to load up on. Some of our competitors make this massive administrative burden by taking a monitoring platform, loading it up on Windows and adding external databases, and then having to patch and update and provide maintenance around those. Painful, painful administrative burdens. We eliminate all of that. Fully self-enclosed appliance and OVA that gets deployed on a virtual machine and you're up doing agentless network monitoring in minutes. So very important to know that, you know, having that Linux-based, uh, you know, built-in OS, built-in database, super critical. But then also put us in your private cloud, right? You can put us in any, in any, any instance that you want around the world. And that certainly is an option for our customers. So bring it all together before I turn things over to Furquan. I'm gonna give you some more time, Furquan, on the use cases, because that really gets to the heart of things. This is a summary of the big differentiators. First, that timed installation, auto discovery, configuration devices, interrogating with intelligent templates, takes hours, you know, just takes hours to get full updates into environments that are massive at scale, right? We have customers that rely on us to manage over 100,000 devices, right, across 20, 30, 40 different data centers around the world. They rely on automation up front with their network operators to do it in a more intelligent way to manage that auto discovery uh, and bringing devices under management. Critically important is one click to upgrade the platform, right? We're self-enclosed appliance, no more windows, no more separate databases, no more antivirus crawling around, you know, your monitoring platform. One click, the appliance is updated instantly in your environment. So massive reduction there in terms of maintenance and updating the platform itself. Uh, time to scale, absolutely. We're going to talk about that in a live demo. The administrative burden, you know, I didn't mention that earlier. You know, our our tip, our service engines are headless and they feed a central collector. And Ryan will get into that more detail for Quan. Uh, but we certainly can scale out better, right? We can have 5,000 devices under monitoring with a single service engine. Some of our 
core competitors in the market can only handle maybe 1,500 at max. So if you're a larger organization, like you know, five of the largest US federal agencies we serve today, they demand that we are able to have more scale, more devices under monitoring per headless service engine that feeds the central uh, collector. Uh, we also have AI ops autopilot. You know, BMC has a huge AI story to tell to the market, and the acquisition of Netrio continues that story. We built the AI ops autopilot that is just a feature within the platform to help the network operator look at you know, eliminating alert noise and getting rid of alert fatigue in the environment. The AI ops autopilot that Ryan will show you in the live demo is trying to be the friend of the network operator and make suggestions on where your permissions are, mis are, are not optimal or other things in terms of um, you know, configurations and settings around devices and be proactive with the network operator say, this device is noisy. This is why, how you can actually dial it down and fine tune your monitoring to get rid of alert fatigue. Last for me, uh, we are SOC2 certified and Vericode verified. We work with some of the most secure US federal agencies. We work with large transportation companies, banking, healthcare, and finance are our largest and strongest verticals. So we take security first in mind. A lot of our competitors have had very serious security issues. Um, we are architected for security. We manage encryption for security. Every one of our customers, top three verticals demand that we are some of the leaders when it comes to safe and secure agentless network monitoring, and we provide that with this platform. For Quan, I'm going to turn this over to you to talk about two great customer use cases that you and I've worked on for the last half a decade. Over to you. Thank you, Richard. And yeah, very well said. That's a good intro towards Netrio's key principles and key um, abilities. Hey guys, this is Furkan here. I'm a solutions engineer at BMC and coming over as a Netrio subject matter expert. And over to the next slide, Richard, let's go over some of the key verticals of Netrio. So Netrio's agentless design and efficient solution has found its way into several IT verticals, and we support several major uh, logos here, as you could see on the screen, uh, from monitoring capacity perspective. Uh, we have a huge presence in finance and uh, insurance vertical and banking sector, where you could, uh, where I'm going to be going over one of the key uh, use cases for Citizens Bank, how, how um, they were able to utilize Netrio to deploy a fully secure um, Netrio uh, monitoring system in their on-prem solution. And they are also trying to go into the hybrid space where they're trying to get Netrio into the cloud um, environment as well. So that way they are adapting new technologies as industries grow, as IT verticals grow, people um, from IT industries tend to enhance their monitoring footprint as well. So. Other key sectors where Netrio is deployed is also in healthcare and uh, insurance and logistics, as you could see. Um, in healthcare, we have customers such as MGB, who is utilizing our monitoring technology to monitor their data centers, as well as their remote hospital and clinic locations. Industries such as um, companies such as Sam and Med Imaging is also utilizing Netrio to deploy and monitor the imaging uh, server uh, architecture, as well as monitoring how the applications that are controlling the imaging and background storage of those data is also taking up. <clears throat> Sorry, give me a point here, guys. Yeah, uh, Sam and Med Imaging is utilizing Netrio to feed the data that Netrio is collecting and storing it in secure locations so that way they could get that monitoring around the infrastructure. Uh, sorry, I lost my chain of thought here, guys. Sorry for my fumble here. Okay, uh, let's go on to the next slide, Richard. I'm going to quickly go over some of the use cases into one particular one itself. So McDonald's has been one of our key customers who has got 15,000 or so geographical locations where they have... Um, restaurants in the North America region. And Netrio is deployed in this, um, Netrio is deployed in their on-premise environment, which is providing monitoring into all of their 14,000 geographical locations. And we could scale this monitoring and we could get these devices on board into the Netrio platform with a quick, faster, automated approach. Utilizing Netrio's auto configuration module, where we were able to ingest some automated principles for us to learn key devices. And utilizing this methodology, we were quickly able to get into their environment, learn up their devices and spin up their monitoring with zero admin burden. The key challenges that this critical customer faced were around attack footprint. They were having an on-premise solution that was recently prone to a security failure. 
that caused them to look into other monitoring systems. Other key challenges that this customer had were around um, not having a particular place for them to easily create customized dashboard for the different user groups who are trying to access um, who are trying to access the monitoring system. Since they were positioned around these many different geographical locations, they needed a system that can provide them the central knock approach. And this customer was coming in from utilizing several different monitoring tools. They needed an approach where they could consolidate their multiple monitoring systems into one. Other key challenges that this customer had were around alert fatigue and not having a system that had built-in incident management built into them. So the Netrio solution came into the place where it had its own built-in incident management solution that could do the incident correlation right from an alarm perspective. Also provide them an approach where they could easily onboard their devices and do lifecycle management of these devices on a ready, uh, readily capacity as we keep on learning more about the infrastructure. The key issues that the customer had from the previous monitoring system around security, around onboarding, around ability to scale to their uh, different um, levels of devices that could all be solved using Netrio. And one more key item that Netrio could bring to the table for them was the turnkey installation, right? As they were key, as they were growing with their different sites, as they were bringing up more restaurant locations, they could easily scale Netrio with the service engine architecture. They could easily deploy more and more service engines to support monitoring in the different geographical locations. Go on to our next slide, Richard. And here is a quick screenshot of uh, the knocks, uh, the knock view, where they were able to get a ready key visibility into all of their different remote site locations where the restaurants are positioned and get a quick alarm view of their devices. They could easily put it, put this up on the dashboards, have the knock engineers readily took it, uh, take a look at their alarms, and also get into the right cause or the root cause of a uh, of an issue by a single dashboard click. The single pane of dash, the single pane of view from a dashboard capacity give them key insights into the failing geographical site locations, failing issues, also keep holding their ISPs accountable, right? Since they are different, since they are remote geographical locations, key internet visibility and van metrics are key to them, right? Giving, getting them key insights on how their site latencies are, how the site, uh, site van utilizations are, we're able to key drive them their bandwidth capacity metrics or utilizing those bandwidth capacity metrics, they were able to and grow their uh, monitoring needs or networking needs, okay? Go on to the next one, Richard. I'm gonna quickly go over another um, customer of ours. This is a federal customer of ours. Um, FBI, they have the, they are a secured facility, as you would say so. They are headquartered in Washington, and they have several remote site locations around the globe, as well as in the United States. And they had a huge requirement around security, right? They wanted to have an agentless solution that doesn't invoke too much into their uh, devices, but again, at the same time, provide secure monitoring facility. They were able to use, they were able to do that utilizing Netrio. And they were able to deploy Netrio in an efficient manner that would readily scan the network, grow um, and monitor their devices. Since they were a federal facility, they had several air gap networks. Mo Netrio provides a solution through its service engine architecture to be able to monitor lots of air gap networks, right? You could have independent Netrio systems deployed to monitor different locations, or you could have Netrio be deployed in a core solution while the service then take up the monitoring duties in those, uh, in those remote locations with limited access. Um, utilizing Netrio, they were some of the key challenges that they had, right? Around security, around patching and updates. Netrio single click update mechanism helped them solve these challenges as well. Again, some of the key principles that a federal agency would like to govern against is compliance issues, right? They want to make sure that their devices are secure, their devices are adhering compliances, the devices are able to self-immediate any issues as soon as it is caused, so that way they're reducing the mean time to repair any problems, right? Reducing the, the MTTR. 
So they were able to do that utilizing Netrio. Netrio could propose a solution for them that has built-in self-remediation mechanisms around it. You could create, uh, with Netrio, they could create some active response, SSH, active response PowerShell queries against their devices that could invoke as part of an alarm that's triggered from Netrio. Along with that, what Netrio provided them a capability without any additional licensing cost was an ability to back up the network configuration, uh, all, all at the same time, looking at the configuration, making sure that they are following the compliance rules. And if the devices are failing against any compliance rules that we have set up, Netrio was able to invoke actions to remediate those compliance failures. That was a key benefit for them because through that, they were able to make sure that the network is secure while at the same time, all the monitoring is going on in the right places. And they were able to utilize Netrio's AI ops pilot autopilot solution so that way they could make sure that all the monitoring components are being kept in the right place the administrations of the devices are being happening in the right capacity devices are being placed in the right groups and the templates are controlling all the alert principles as they are directed to do so go on to the next slide richard from <clears throat> So as you could see here, uh, though for security reasons, we can't really have uh, customers screenshots here um, for them, but some of the key insights that Netrio could get for them, right? We were able to reduce the administrative footprint around the devices regarding onboarding of devices. We were utilizing Netrio's easy ability to spin up new dashboards by click and drop. They were able to create several dashboards for the different disparate organizational groups, and they were able to give them flexibility to look at their key monitoring data respective to their monitoring needs. Um, we were able to do a lot of administrative hardware footprint reduction, right? Since Netrio comes as a fully enclosed appliance, right? We don't need separate systems to be deployed to host our databases, separate systems to be deployed to host our UI. We were able to do all of that using one single closed up and closed appliance, right? And having separate service engines to scale the monitoring needs. So with that approach, we were able to reduce a lot of the server footprint, right? That they were needed earlier to monitor the environment. With that, I'm going to quickly complete uh, my use cases. Sorry for the fumble in the start. I lost my notes and track, but over to you, Ronnie. While on, Ronnie's loading up his um, screen as well, um, just a reminder for those that have joined, if you do have any questions to put those into the Q&A, we will be coming to those at the end. Thank you, Farquhar. Appreciate the, uh, the context, um, discussing some of the very important use cases and customers that we've interacted with over the years. Again, we encourage you to put those uh, questions in the chat and we'll get to them as quickly as possible. Uh, so very quickly to provide a, a Netria overview. Uh, so Netria is a full stack monitoring solution, meaning we interface with as many different device types as possible. Within the demo here, you see examples of references to core routers, edge routers, switches. We do battery backups, data center sensors. We can do SD-WAN technologies, firewalls. Uh, cloud resources, servers, so you name it. We use various uh, types of protocols, functions, and methods to interface with as many different device types as possible, allowing you to interface with these devices, gathering as many performance metrics as possible, and centralizing that data within Netrio to allow you to perform your dashboarding, your reporting, and so on. What you see here is the Netrio dashboard. This is what we call the consolidated view, but you can create these custom dashboards as you'd like. You can customize them through drag and drop, and you can assign these at many different levels. So these can be assigned to many different users, so just made available through what we call the quick views. Uh, these can be assigned at the device category level. So allowing you to click, for example, into a core routers device category, and then being dropped into a custom dashboard there to visualize any metrics related to your core routers uh, device category. In addition, you can assign dashboards at the site level. So once we onboard your devices, once we identify the various sites, we'll make sure to allow you to create these dashboards. So for example, you might have an engineer that's dedicated to a specific site, they have the ability to work within that site specifically. 
And last but not least, the ability to create dashboards and assign them at the business workflow level. And in Netrio, a business workflow is whatever you'd like it to be. It's a group of devices that typically uh, is named after a particular business function. For example, edge devices or training departments or infrastructure. You can name it whatever you'd like, but there are additional benefits to categorizing your devices in this way. So for example, you can generate an impact score to say, hey, my web uh, business workflow is in a failed state or my training department is in a degraded state and you can define what it means to be in a failed or degraded state. In addition, when it comes time to re, uh, generating reports or it comes time to, uh, uh, for example, pulling an inventory report or performing, performing specific administrative functions, you can define those specific changes according to business workflow as well. So it's a functional grouping of devices. So once these dashboards are created, again, you can assign them to many different users, but you could also make these available uh, to, to view only users, for example, if they want to get an understanding of the devices that affect their particular business function or, or behaving or, or the health of these devices. So, for example, you might have a uh, dashboard that is more network engineering focused that might be more uptime specific related to specific interfaces. Netflow metrics, top talkers, traffic summaries, a list of incidents. This is just one example of a dashboard that we've created within five minutes. And, uh, you know, we make sure to, 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 to provide you those capabilities. So back to the consolidated view. I want to discuss a couple of the core features before I move into how we actually onboard these devices and begin pulling performance metrics. So if we scroll down, Netrio provides you, in addition to the network performance monitoring, the ability to monitor web applications. And this is called synthetic monitoring. We uh, perform HTTP-based checks against your web applications. These can be internal facing, they can be out in the WAN, but it allows you to check the availability, availability of these applications round trip latency. How long is it taking for these applications to respond? In addition, you can perform multi-step synthetics. So if you wanted to log into the application, pass credentials, uh, fill out a form, order a product to more comprehensively test that web application, you can absolutely do that with Netrio. And then that specific sequence of events will be performed every five minutes, for example, on the polling interval. The ability to gather traffic summaries or or, or gather net flow from your various devices um, is absolutely supported. So you can start visualizing uh, specific metrics or graphs like top conversations by volume, top exporters by volume, um, top applications by volume. So get a better understanding of the various applications conversing across your infrastructure. And then all of these dashboards are also extensible. So if you wanted to click in, for example, to web traffic or SNMP to get a more detailed understanding of that application, and the uh, bandwidth it's consuming across your infrastructure, you can absolutely do that. And in addition, Manager, this allows you to visualize in a calendar view various configuration changes across your various devices. And so to better understand and detect whenever a change is made against a network device, and then allowing you, as Furquan mentioned, to uh, perform compliant, compliance checks. So for example, you can create a rule <clears throat> that says if a but, you know, if a device enables Telnet, I want to reverse that change automatically. And then I want to notify an engineer that that change was attempted. So for example, here, I, br uh, I brought you to a config manager dedicated view. I've switched over to the list view. I can see my various events, my devices that have had uh, configuration backups. I want to click on this Dallas S1, which is a Cisco iOS switch, and I can see the various times at which I backed up the configuration on this device. Anytime the configuration changes, I'll back it up. I don't have to produce an alert every time there's a change. But again, you can create those rules. Uh, we call them configuration management rule sets to allow you to, when the configuration change happens, reverse a change make sure that the configuration remains in compliance, generate an incident to notify engineers that occurred. You can also uh, compare configurations across devices. So a current versus a past configuration, you can pass, you can push configurations in mass to one or more devices, and then you can search across your configurations and so on. So very comprehensive for, from a configuration management standpoint. So, um, 
As mentioned earlier, uh, Netrip provides you the ability to gather as many performance metrics as possible from any one device. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, on a Windows server, we can gather up to 250 different dev um, metrics. <clears throat> Excuse me. On a, you know, router or switch, this might be 70 metrics. We don't limit the number of performance metrics you can gather on any device, and we provide you three years of historicals. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. <clears throat> How do we get these devices in Natrio to begin with? And we do this through our device management lifecycle. And what this means is a fully automated process by which, number one, we're going to discover the devices. And the most common way in which we do this is through IP subnet scanning. We can also hook into your virtualizers through APIs, allowing you to detect uh, new guests or hosts or data stores. We allow you to integrate with CMDB solutions, the ability to integrate with, let's say, for example, a Meraki SD-WAN architecture to auto-detect edge devices, the ability to just send logs or traffic into Netrio so we can then onboard that device if it's not already under management. So various kinds of ways in which you can discover these devices automatically, and this is a fully automated process, and then we'll interrogate that device. We'll make sure we have the right credentials to begin interfacing with that device. And if we do, we can put that device under management and start pulling performance metrics. Netrio out of the box comes with various templates for the most common devices, allowing you to detect that device and automatically start pulling performance metrics without having to, you know, go look for specific MIBs or do, you know, uh, dig through the internet for, for the right performance metrics. We support that out of the box. And so once that device is under management, uh, we'll use templates to instruct Netrio uh, on how we want that device actually monitored. And this is not referring to the actual performance metrics. This is referring to my thresholds, my service checks, what will qualify as an incident, for example, and how do we want to notify out to the right individuals once that incident is produced. And so if we look here, uh, these are examples of templates. I won't spend too much time on this, but again, those templates are those instructions that uh, that tell Netrio how I want this group of devices monitored. So if I co come down here to a Windows template, you can quickly see that we have an area where we do the credentials. So how do we manage credentials? And this really depends on the protocol that's being used to monitor this specific group of devices. In addition, we'll define what kind of alerting mechanisms we want to trigger once an incident is generated, uh, and also discuss that in more detail here in just a moment. The kind of perform the service checks I want to perform. This could be as simple as, "Hey, is this specific service running on this Windows server?" It can be a, a binary check, for example, looking to see if uh, a, a device is up or down. So a host check, for example. It could be a DNS check to see is this DNS call resolving as expected, for example, uh, or it could be an API call. So we have about 200 different plugins. So depending on the type of device, you can use the right service checks appropriately. In addition, those thresholds. So once we start gathering uh, time series metrics, we can do upper bound or lower bound threshold. So for example, is it exceeding 80%? Is it going below 50%? And um, this is, of course, for those time series metrics, for example, CPU utilization. But in addition to those static thresholds, you have the ability to do anomaly detection. And this is extremely important for our clients. It's the ability to more dynamically understand if the current performance metric we're receiving from this device is anomalous as compared to eight or nine samples in the past, for example. And this can be eight weekly samples, eight hourly samples, eight daily samples. And it's going to be more dynamic. Uh, it's going to allow you to identify, you know, specific issues that maybe a static threshold would not be able to find, for example. So is this current performance metric anomalous as compared to the uh, various samples in the past? And then I can generate a warning uh, incident or a critical incident, for example. In addition to that, you can do logging. So if this device is sending us logs, I, I can parse those logs. I can identify specific using regex matches, uh, specific uh, 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 you know things within this log to then generate an incident, for example. And then, of course, those configuration management rule sets allowing you to do compliance checks against network configurations that I mentioned earlier. So once these uh, incidents are produced, you have the ability to track active incidents within Netrio. So an active incident 
uh, is essentially similar to a ticket, but not exactly. Most customers, what they do is they take Netrio and they integrate with their ticketing system to allow you to generate an incident in Netrio and bi-directionally create a ticket within the ITSM solution, the ability to acknowledge that ticket back into Netrio to, to stop any further alarms from being produced. But we do have clients that also just do their incident management within Netrio as well. Right. So we have an example here of an incident. Uh, we have an incident for a flow collector, which is a device that we've named. Uh, we have a round trip latency issue on this device. We can see that it's exceeded a specific uh, critical threshold and it's created a critical alarm. Mm -hmm. As an engineer, I can come here and acknowledge this. I can perform auto re uh, manual remediation actions against this device. And I'll discuss this in more detail here in just a moment. Um, I can change priorities and so on. Once this issue is resolved, this will uh, switch from an open to a closed to a closed state. It will no longer produce additional alarms from there. Again, we expect that this is in most cases integrated with an ITSM solution. Let's discuss uh, an individual device. I want to delve into, uh, do a keyword search for a device called India, for example. And in this case, I am doing a global keyword search, which means I can also identify interfaces that might be named India, applications that might be uh, named India, uh, for example, anything within my documentation or what have you. But in this case, I'm just looking for a device named India R1. I'm clicking this specific icon here, which is the device dashboard. Every device in Netrio has a device dashboard. This is where we centralize performance metrics specific for this device, providing you host information, of uh, any information related to the services and the service checks we're, we're performing against this device. And then of course, a list of performance metrics as well as topology and some trends. What you see here is a Cisco IOS router called India R1, the IP address, the device category, and the site it's assigned to. We can see we have 30 healthy checks, two in a warning state, and one in a critical state. You can see a summary of the incidents that we have here. And if I... Uh, Click the drop down for host information. I can see some information related to the site it's assigned to, the type of device, uptime, serial numbers, descriptions, and so on. But more importantly, if I come over to the performance tab, you can see all performance metrics that I'm gathering for this device. Again, round trip latency, traffic in and out, CP utilization, uh, memory related metrics, for example, network measurements, packet rates, uh, and then the interface metrics here. Again, unlimited performance metrics per device, if I was gathering EIGRP or BGP metrics or QoS metrics, they would show up here. Um, all of these metrics are extensible. For example, I can click on individual graphs for any one of these. Uh, we keep these metrics for three years and we provide you a very handy uh, API to allow you to solve for those edge cases that you might want to, for example, feed a data lake, or you might want to uh, programmatically interact with these data points in a way uh, to, to solve for a particular business use case, for example. And so those are the performance metrics. Once um, I want to show you a couple of built-in views that we have in Netra that are extremely handy. Number one is our topology view. Netrio will automatically understand the parent-child relationships across your devices. And what this means is using LLDP, CDP, as well as Traceroute, we allow you to under get a better understanding of the parent-child relationships across your infrastructure. And this is important from a documentation standpoint. It's important from a troubleshooting standpoint, but it also plays into our incident management uh, functionalities that we have in Netrio. So for example, here I have the highest level 30,000 foot view of my infrastructure. And if I click into, for example, my Dallas location, I'm going to have a topology from the vantage point of my Dallas as soon as it loads. And so if I click into a device at that point, for example, this Dallas switch, I'll be brought to a topology from the vantage point of that specific switch. So you can see we, we, we carry those parent-child relationships across many different levels. But the important takeaway here is if, for example, this switch has an outage, in a traditional monitoring solution, you're going to have a thousand alerts that are produced for, every, for all of those devices that are connected to that switch. In the case of Netrio, because we understand the parent-child relationships, we'll walk up the topology, we'll identify what the root cause is, 
will create one incident and within the details of that incident will notate hey there are you know, a, a wide variety of other devices that are affected as part of this outage, but I've created one incident and I've generated one alarm. That's one way in which we're going to make sure the uh, engineers are focused on the root cause and they're not inundated by a thousand alarms that might be produced if a switch or matter of fact, the core router has an outage. Uh, we want to make sure we focus on what's important and uh, reduce the alert deluge. And so that's an example of an automated incident management uh, uh, tool that we've embedded in, the, in, in, in Netrio to make sure that we're reducing those alarms. We also have uh, additional mechanisms by which you can solve for edge cases uh, from an incident management standpoint. So, for example, we can create, uh, in this case, an incident management rule that allows us to suppress alarms or collapse various incidents into one to make sure that we're performing some of that um, suppression or intel intelligent incident management on the front end to make sure that we're collapsing incidents where it makes sense, producing alarms only when it's related to the root cause. And we're doing this through what we call incident management rules using if and else statements. And I'll provide you an example. For example, if you have a web application stack where you're monitoring a web service, and you might be monitoring the underlying host. And then you're also monitoring the underlying network equipment. If there is an outage within that stack, you might produce various alarms and that generates various incidents. Through incident management rules, we can say if this specific web service has an outage and the underlying host has an outage and then the underlying, uh, for example, switch has an outage, let's correlate those specific alarms. Let's produce one incident and let's produce one alarm. And so these incident management rules provide you a lot of flexibility to make sure that you're uh, properly triaging those incidents as they occur in Netrio. So once we are producing incidents, and I showed you an example of an incident, there's a lot you can do in terms of actually alerting out. And let me show you what that looks like. Various actions and you can trigger various uh, responses to an incident. And this could be your typical email out to a ticketing system or to a distribution group. This can be a syslog to a centralized logging tool. This can be a mobile notification. Netrio provides a fully fledged mobile app that provides you the capability of monitoring performance metrics, looking at statistics related to a specific device, looking at your dashboards, but in addition, receiving push notifications whenever there's an incident that's generated uh, in that trio. And this is great for those network engineers that are out in the field that want to make sure they receive a notification whenever there's an incident. In addition to that, we have the ability to do custom webhooks. So custom webhooks could be a, a webhook into BHOM to create an event, for example, in BHOM. It can be a, a message into a Teams, a Teams space. Uh, this could be for a Slack channel, for example. This could be uh, a JIRA ticket that needs to be created. So any third-party web application that supports a custom webhook, you have the ability to interface with through, uh, through this webhook mechanisms. In addition to that, you have the ability to um, do what we call active responses. And this is one of the more exciting parts of, of the way in which we can respond to an incident because it allows you to, tr uh, to attempt to auto-remediate issues. And you can create that dynamic within your environment that as issues occur, we can learn those issues and then create an automated response for that issue if it were to occur in the future. And this could be any command via PowerShell or SSH, allowing you to do things like restarting servers or restarting a service or running a specific, uh, um, you know, for example, you might have a logging issue where you want to clear temp files or rotate logs or expand a specific drive to make sure to try to deal with that specific storage issue or whatever issue that might be more proactively. And then if, for example, that specific active response doesn't fix the issue, Netrio can automatically escalate to tier two, which might then involve getting an engineer involved uh, or what have you. These specific actions are extremely flexible. So you can do, for example, a tier one response, you can do a tier two, you can do a tier three, and then you can automatically escalate to those tiers uh, depending on specific criteria. 
And so, for example, uh, so I provided a couple of examples, but, um, you know, you can mix and match these. These can be numerous uh, actions taken at, taken at each tier. Uh, and so it really depends on the um, exact use case, for example. And last but not least, I want to mention our AI ops um, solution. An autopilot is a tool that is going to be the administrator's best friend. So really it's sole purpose is to take a look and scan the various configuration artifacts in Netrio. And this is not scanning your devices specifically. This is scanning the way Netrio is configured to monitor your devices. And it's going to make recommendations about how you can improve monitoring across your infrastructure. So for example, if we are monitoring a group of devices and nine out of 10 metrics expected metrics are not returning performance metrics. That's an important point. And we want to make sure to point that out to you to, to tell your engineers, hey, you should take a look at this device but we're, because we're only receiving nine out of 10 metrics. Or for example, a device that's not responding to the credentials appropriately, we can take action against that specific device to maybe uh, you know, re-onboard that device to make sure that the credentials are working as intended, for example. And so these um, specific recommendations are going to also provide you a fix. And the fix can be applied automatically by clicking fix, well, manually by clicking fix, or can be applied automatically. So you can have a process of Netria automatically trying to address these issues to make sure that we have maximum visibility across your various devices. And we're also fine tuning the configuration of your monitoring over time as your environment shifts and changes, you add new devices or the templates get modified, for example. And so this is that best friend to make sure that you know we're, we're gathering as many uh, statistics as possible and we're keep, keeping your, your, your monitoring as, as efficient and as uh, um, you know, the hygiene of your monitoring as, as well as possible. So with that said, I want to turn this over uh, to provide a, 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 at least 10 minutes of Q&A. Uh, again, put your, uh, put your questions in the chat and we're happy to answer them. And, and, and I appreciate your time here today. So Richard, if you want to just cover the last few slides and then we'll go into the Q&A. Sure. Thank you so much, everyone. I was just going to also mention, uh, how do we license this solution? You know, we're absolutely, the entire platform is licensed very simply on a price per device per month. You know, a lot of our competitors have, you know, one of our biggest ones, it take 12 independent modules that they acquired over decades to do what you saw from what Ronnie demoed today in the review. So do you know it's a very simple licensing structure that includes everything you saw in the live demo from Ronnie with just an enterprise license that's based on device count, not based on a bunch of modules, uh, as Ronnie had mentioned. So in terms of wrap, yes, now you can see the, 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 the reasons why BMC has acquired this powerful upstream network monitoring platform that's been in the market for over 24 years. We're excited to actually bring this to you. There's some follow-ups we can have going into the wrap-up, but you could definitely schedule a live demo with us uh, at any time here. Um, I also want to say this solution is sold completely separate as a network performance monitoring platform, or we're also part of BMC's Helix Operations Management AI Ops bundles. So there's some advanced bundles of the, of the Helix Operations Management platform that we're just a part of, or it's sold completely independent as a, as a standalone solution here at BMC. We're offering anyone that's joined today's webinar, and thank you for joining us, to, to prove how quickly administrators can get up and running with this platform. We're offering free passes to the Netrio, Netrio University platform for administration. You can get on that platform and within just a few hours, be fully certified in the platform. And we think that's an excellent way to get to know the platform and see how quick, quickly your organization can be up and running. Our entire organization, our team is going to be at BMC Connect. Uh, our technical co-founders will be there and executives. Uh, we really hope you can join us. Um, we're happy to set up you know, private briefings for you on the Netrio solution. Uh, but please do join us at BMC Connect. We'll be arriving there next weekend. We hope to see you there. We'll be prominently uh, part of that, uh, that event in a big way. Additional so resource. Oh, sure. Go ahead. I was ahead, going to say, just Richard, another sure. thing that did come up, one of the questions was around whether or not you were going to be at Connect. So thank you for confirming that. That question did come up during the Q&A. Um, so if obviously anyone is interested, in including with the university, um, we will share those links out for you to get subscribed today. 
Okay, great. Yes, Ronnie Furquan, I will be there absolutely, along with our technical co-founders and others in the Netrio uh, team. The global team will be there for sure. So please reach out to us. Nitrio University, free passes for attendees today. That's a special offer to prove the value uh, to get in there and relook at the platform. Um, what can Nitrio monitor? That's another link here for resources and also looking at deployment, right? You know, your cloud, my cloud are on-prem. You've got options here with us compared to our competition. So with that, let's open up to the live q and I think we've got 10 minutes left, Samantha. And I think we we've do, got and we've had quite a sure. lot of questions coming in. Your team's been very busy, and I know we did have one for, from Akshita just saying, is the webinar training video and KB article for this configuration? So I don't know if someone wants to answer that question that we've got into the chat. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a knowledge base article that I can share with you on servicing and deployment and administration of it. Absolutely. Okay, and we'll share the, the links after as well. And also the links that have been shared as resources on the slides. And um, we will be sending out the slides, the recording and a list of all the Q&A questions as well. So don't worry about taking everything right now. Um, we have another question. So this is from Alejandro. Um, Alejandro, if you're online and you want to come off mute, I'm just going to give you access. Bear with me. Um, so your question was, uh, what are the telco equipment devices for core, RAN and transport that you can discover out of the box from telco equipment providers like Ericsson, Samsung and Nokia? I'm not sure who in the team would like to answer that one. And Alejandro, if you want to come off of mute and talk to the team live, feel free. Hi, everyone. Do you, do you understand my question? Is that clear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Um, Yep. Yeah, basically, I want to know just... what, what are the devices that you can discover uh, in terms of uh, telco devices uh, for core, RAN, transport, uh, for uh, vendors like Ericsson, Samsung, Nokia? Yeah, I, I mean, so so if it's IP enabled, so if we get an IP address on that device, we can discover that device. Um, we can interface with that device in most cases if it's SNMP enabled. Uh, but in some cases, we do have native API integrations with these devices. I don't see why we can't interface with Ericsson, Samsung, and Nokia. That's that's very common for us. Okay. Are we talking about switches, routers, uh, load balancer only, or, or do you include uh, more complex uh, network elements from the code and the run? No, more complex NMS is as well. More complex architectures of various device types beyond just switches, routers, and and and, and the most the more common device types, for example. Okay, and the unit rate, do you discover them directly, or do you use uh, do you go through uh, an OSS or something else? No, we'll discover them directly unless we integrate with something like a CMDB solution uh, in that case. And in some in, in some cases, we do have the ability to integrate with, for example, in the case of SD-WAN technologies, we'll interface with, with the various controllers or what have you uh, to, 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 to gather device information. And then that's how we go and fetch uh, interface with the devices directly from there. So it really depends. But in most cases, we're interfacing and discovering those devices directly. Okay, and they have to work uh, with those vendors, uh, or you don't need to to work with those with those vendors to discover their their network devices. No, we don't have to work with the vendors unless there's a specific and unique use case whereby we have to build something against that specific vendor. For example, in the event that uh, they only allow, uh, allow you know discovery through API, then then we have to work with that vendor. But in most cases, if we're discovering these devices directly through uh, traditional mechanisms, we don't need to to reach out to the vendor. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your question. We did also have a couple of questions actually on our community page. I'll just um, ask those out to the team now. And if anyone else has got any questions in the interim, please put them into the Q&A. Um, so we had a question around, can Netrio out of the box feed data into Helix AI Ops solution? Yes. So current today, we're, we're sending events. Uh, your own, maybe you want to speak to that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I love these types of questions, Ronnie, honestly, because it allows us to speak a little bit about our more about our vision and how we see the Helix service ops platform. So Netrio solutions are a part of our AI ops advanced offering. What that means is that it is integrated into the Helix service ops platform. 
at which allows our customers to utilize full stack monitoring and AI ops, including what we just saw. And as Ronnie was showing us before, and by the way, great, great demo, Ronnie. I, I mean, really, really like to see these things in action. So, so we integrate with both the IT operations management side, plus we also integrate with the IT service management side, meaning we can generate alerts that, you know, and events that go into our ITOM, IT operations management side, but we can also open up tickets and, <clears throat> and create incidents on the IT service management side. So our vision is that Netrio is a full part of the, the Helix platform. Today we're bringing in events. We are very quickly going to be feeding in both metrics and topology into the platform as well. And all of this is done through our AI ops intelligent integration framework, which is an integral part of the platform that allows us to bring in all types of information. So when we say that Helix is an open platform, that's what we mean. We can get information and different types of information from all different places. So I hope, hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. And we'll um, make sure we get a response that we can put out to everyone on our blog post. There was another question. Um, we were asked, how does Netrio define a device and what is light versus full device? The last part, Samantha, I'm sorry. Um, how does Netrio define a device and what is light vs full device? Sure. Yeah. So a device is, is just, uh, for example, a router switch or gateway, um, you know, an IP address, that, you know, a device that is uh, OS enabled device, for example. This could be a router, a switch, a gateway, a firewall, a load balancer, uh, you know, a battery backup. These are all devices. Um, however, the difference between full device and light device is where it gets interesting. A full device is a device where we're doing more than just an availability check. So, for example, if we're just looking to see whether or not that specific device is reachable and alive, then that's going to be a full device. If the device, for example, is a wireless access point where we're just looking to see if that device is available, we can treat that as a light device and light devices are billed at one tenth of a full device. So for example, 10 access points is a uh, full device. Right? So, so you can think of it and you can apply that to various kinds of, of devices. It could be a battery backup. It could be uh, a UPS, it could be a, a data center sensor, it could be an IoT device. So these can be IoT devices because you're just looking to make sure that they're available. But if you're gathering more than that, more metrics than just that, uh, then that would be built as a full device. And a full device gives you unlimited performance metrics per device. The only difference is if we're doing cloud resources, uh, for example, AWS or GCP, those are light devices and we'll gather more performance metrics than just one, but but these are API calls. It's, it's, it's relatively straightforward. We build those as a light device. That's the only uh, caveat. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, I will post that in the community. So thank you for answering that question. We have one more or in fact time for one more and then we will close the uh, session. So the last question that I had is, is there a difference between Netrio SaaS hosted, self hosted and on-prem? And I think maybe Chris or someone might be able to answer that question. For sure. Yeah, so as previously mentioned during uh, Richard's uh, discussion or portion of the presentation, there is no feature difference or um, between the SaaS on-prem or self-hosted. There's full, complete feature parity. The only differences are going to be really with the SaaS, there's no need for high availability as that additional redundancy is already built in. And the main thing is to give customers the flexibility to host the Netrio virtualized machine that best fits their architectural requirements. For example, some folks that, or companies that operate in highly secure industries may prefer an on-prem while some that have uh, been a, a cloud-first adoptive strategy may want to host it in their own SaaS instance, whether that be GCP, Azure, AWS, we really don't mind. Um, it's really based upon what the, is most appropriate for the customer's architecture and requirements.